Hey guys, Dean Holmschneider, Scooby Techie. Thanks for stopping by. Nice to have you here. We're going to be discussing today the latest in the addition of the lineups of diver propulsion vehicles by a company called Seacraft. It's called the Seacraft Go is the model number. And it's just an absolutely fantastic, fantastic diver propulsion vehicle. Again, like I said, thanks for coming by. Let's jump right in. It's called the Seacraft Go. And let me tell you, it definitely goes. Um, it's got quite a few things that are really cool about it. Um, and we're gonna get further into those once we delve into the actual review. But for right now, just wanted to get an introduction done, introduce this little tiny device. It, it weighs 17 or 18 pounds, which is just unbelievable. Great for travel. Uh, and the best part about it is it doesn't lack any punch, so to speak, as far as a DPV or a scooter is concerned. The only thing that's different about it, as far as usability, in my opinion, is just the smaller cone, which requires or mandates smaller batteries, which then will also mandate less burn time. But side-by-side uh, -side speed comparisons between this and the Seacraft uh, Future, um, uh, the, the um, the one that we have at the shop that I've been driving, you know, several times here and there. Uh, I, I got on that scooter for the first time in the future and was just absolutely amazed at the technological advancements between that scooter and others on the market. Um, and I really thought it would be a long time before something else came out that could compete with it. Um, this is in essence, almost the same scooter. Obviously it's a smaller size, smaller cow, smaller fan. You would think because of that, smaller fan moves less water, less speed. Um, in a side-by-side -side speed comparison with me and a student of mine, granted, he is not an experienced DPV driver or pilot. Um, I have quite a bit more experience than he does. But when I was on the future, uh, by the time we ran about 200 feet, I stopped and turned around. I was about 20 or 30 feet ahead of him um, when I was on the future and he was on this. Then I figured, okay, maybe it's the scooter. Maybe I've got the bigger, more powerful scooter. Let me try and switch. So we swapped scooters and did the exact same run um, in the exact same section of, of Jackson Blue in Mariana. Uh, and I was quite surprised, same exact length on run. I got to the end, I got off the trigger, I turned and looked, and again, I was about 20 or 30 feet in front. That tells me um, the, the only differences are diver and scooter, but if I made the same, same headway and same distance and uh, same time, it's not the scooter, it's just the diver. So obviously, you know, being um, a DPV instructor, I am uh, likely a little bit in better trim than the student, uh, a little bit more comfortable, um, so on and so forth. And in my opinion, that's what it came down to. And the same distance over the same time, or same distance over the same distance, the only difference was in both runs was was the diver. So, but same, uh, same lead, or same uh, distance was acquired within that um, runtime that we ran from start to finish. So uh, I was absolutely blown away and amazed that this little tiny thing packed just as much of a punch as far as acceleration and speed as a Seacrep Future, um, which again, I was, I was just absolutely blown away that this thing was performing so well. So without further ado, why don't we get into some of the finer aspects of this um, um, diver propulsion vehicle. Uh, it is very lightweight. It's about 17 or 18 pounds. At first I was wondering why it had a handle on both the top and the bottom, but it clearly serves as a very good anti-roll feature for the scooter uh, or diver propulsion vehicle and um, helps you handle it, carry it a little bit better. Really the only thing that I found with the size of this not that big a deal. A lot of people will carry their scooters thrown over a shoulder like this. Um, doesn't really leave a lot of room for leeway, but you could literally just carry this thing with one hand at 17 or 18 pounds and pretty much do whatever you want with it because it's so light. So other things to notice on the Seacraft Go, the display is different. Um, I will have a bigger view here but this display is literally, let me just turn it on. That is your speed, that is your battery life. Um, speed can be um, very easily adjusted up and down. 
it has, that's full speed, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight speeds, and it even has the reverse, like its bigger brother, which is um, pretty cool. I don't know that I've ever warranted or needed reverse on a scooter, but if you can do it, why not? Maybe somebody will have a use for it someday. Um, this battery indicator, as you can see here, three red, three yellow, three green, that's nine lights all together, and it, it drains unbelievably slow in my opinion. I did a 75 minute dive where I was on the trigger for probably at least 60 to 65 of those minutes um, and speeds varying um, just to try out acceleration and deceleration. I, I was on four most of the time, every once in a while down to three, um, sometimes up to five and even several times I hit it all the way up to um, the high speed of nine just to see um, how long it would take to drain down a battery light indicator, um, which each light is about 10%. Um, it was very surprising in how little juice that this battery drained in a 75 minute dive. Uh, I started and I was down one light already. We had just gotten it at the shop uh, and it was already down one light, but it was enough to get a test dive in. So I took it out. After that 75 minute dive, I brought it back and I was only down three lights. So I only lost two. So somewhere between 20 and 29% um, of the battery approximately, um, which even if it's 30%, if a third of my battery is gone in, in 65 to 70 minutes or 60 minutes, um, I, I'm going to be looking for at least three to four hours on this thing. And you guys can look at the spec sheets on the website. I'm not going to talk about all the specific specs um, that you can look up online. But uh, for me, as a recreational open water scooter, as a light tech scooter, um, uh, or as a backup scooter, if someone's doing a bigger dive in an overhead where you need to have the dependability and the reliability to get you out as far as you swim in, this thing is just absolutely fantastic. Um, if we turn this back off again, you guys will see on the exploded view, um, if we hold both triggers, uh, see if I could do this while while I turn it on. Okay, we are now in the settings mode. So if you hit that, nope, oh, that did not work. Didn't catch the right mode. Hang on a second. Okay, so again, here we are at tech mode. Tech mode means one trigger, scooter goes. If I'm on trigger, I'm all set in my settings to default to speed four. If I double tap the other trigger, I automatically go to nine or highest speed. Double tap the other trigger again, I automatically go to the speed I was set to. Now, if I up my speed, now I'm on five or six, you can hear it kind of wind up a little bit. It does take some time to accelerate, which the boys like. So it's not a you know, really quick snap and jerky. So all the way up to nine, double tap goes all the way down again. Now, if I happen to get off the trigger and I stop, I'm doing a tie-in or I'm communicating with my buddy or whatever it may be. If you watch the, the smaller display, the lights now went off. So we are now not on the trigger it will not activate. So in order to go back to the previous speed that I was already set to, if I just double tap, it automatically goes back to the speed I was set to. Absolutely fantastic. The two little buttons to adjust speed work quite well. And you can even adjust speed while you're on the trigger. Which is really super handy. All right, now that we've talked about that, let's actually get into the finer components that make this thing super interesting as far as a DPV is concerned. One of the added benefits of the Seacraft line of scooters, I'm not sure if anybody else has it yet, but I'm pretty sure they were the first to market with it. My charge port is right here, outside, exposed. Super simple charge cable, literally 
just connects like that. That's simple. No need to open the scooter every single time you're gonna charge it, which thereby increases the odds of rolling an O-ring or not sealing properly and then flooding a scooter. So I don't know about you folks, but scooters are fairly expensive. I'd rather not waste my money and throw away everything I've spent on a scooter. Just because I had to plug it in and charge it overnight. I'm just adjusting my other view. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna open this cap. And this is a little bit of a pain, so I've gotta put it on the ground and use a foot to assist. All right, so I had to go off camera. The handle popped off um, the actual cone. I guess it wasn't tight enough. So I had to reset it and redo it and, and put it back on again. Um, the cone is now off. Just a, a kind of like a cone screw cap. This then comes off. One thing I love about this handle, as I mentioned earlier, it does serve as a good anti-roll device. Um, and it's also got quite a few um, threaded mounting holes on all sides. So it gives you plenty of options as far as um, mounting things like lights or cameras or whatever it may be. Once you have the cone open, there is another cone screw cap that holds on the battery assembly cover. Here's one of the awesome features about this Cell goes bad, just replace this one device. Or this one device. Same connectors as the charge or charger, and they just pop on just like that. Really super simple. A lot of DPVs um, have big battery packs that are soldered um, in series, so if one little cell let's call them 18650s if one of those goes bad that's probably the most common battery rechargeable uh, in use in scuba right now if one of those goes bad you could lose the whole pack um, these i'm not sure exactly what's inside these might be 18650s uh, but it is seacraft specific uh, rechargeable battery lithium ion 32.4 volts 97.2 watt hours has a part number and everything I can almost guarantee, again, there's no prices available on anything yet, but I can almost guarantee this is gonna cost, one of these is gonna cost a heck of a lot less than replacing the whole pack um, on a regular DPV or previously available on the market. Um, there is also this little connector right here, which is a kill switch. Pull that out, your scooter cannot start. So, nice little feature. It is also travel friendly. Um, you can travel with this. It is travel rated on each of the batteries. I'm not sure if you can see that. You should be able to on the smaller view. It is travel rated. So I got this thing or uh, Cave Adventure has got this thing at the shop. I asked that if I could test drive it and possibly write a review. He said, sure. Uh, he said I had to set it up first, which it's not very difficult or complicated, but it's so much easier on this than any other scooter I've ever been involved with or used. That right there is your entire weighting and trim assembly. Thread that down, move the weights down, slide that down. That adjusts your trim. Each weight obviously adds or subtracts more weight. And we actually had to cut a little bit of one weight off just to get the trim just right but it was still a little bit heavy in the water when I actually dove it yesterday, as opposed to when we tried it out in the fill tub. So what I'm gonna do is take that last remaining piece of that one weight off. That should leave the, the DPV slightly, ever so slightly positively buoyant. And ultimate goal is when you park it somewhere, if you go to go swim through something small and tight and you don't wanna take it with you, uh, so if you just wrap it on the line and park it somewhere, you want it sitting nice and flat with a tiny bit of flow, um, but not, I shouldn't say sitting, kind of floating nice and flat, 
Um, you don't want to have that thing resting on the floor in case it's a silty floor. Um, and you also don't want to have it, you know, tailed straight up and down. It should be nice and level and trim with the um, toe leash just holding it where it's supposed to be. Um, this rod is one directional. There's some flat surfaces. I don't know if you guys can see that shape. So it only goes in one way. And the peak on the weights is very important that it fit um, into the, the pizza pie, so to speak, because actually what I'll do just to demonstrate how easy this thing is to break down and take traveling with you. There we go, all cells are out. This pulls out, this comes out. You can pack this thing in a carry-on bag and it'd be a piece of cake. But that's the pizza pie I was talking about. And in order to fit that in there, these need to be put in a certain way and this rod only fits in one way. So it's gotta be angled just right. You should be able to see that on the smaller view. And if not, then uh, we can always get some exploded views or, or some close-up photos later on. So get to where you're going, put everything back together. The ease of plugging these battery canisters in is just absolutely unbelievable. This DPV or scooter, in my opinion, is gonna be attractive to, I think I mentioned earlier, uh, recreational open water divers. It has a free diving mode. I'm not much into free diving, so I can't speak of it. Um, I personally, um, and please, I'm not trying to <laughs> cause an uproar. I don't understand free diving unless you're actually diving free. If you're riding a sled or using a scooter, it's just a breath holding contest at depth. But again, not into, into free diving. So please don't chop my head off for that. Um, so now that that's all said and done, the cover only goes one way, so the rod can fit into that hole. That's it. This cap goes back on. Snug it down. This then goes back on. You do need to be just a little bit careful about rolling an O-ring, but where the O-rings are located and how the inside of this cone has a double bevel and lip on it. Um, I think it would be really, really difficult to roll an O-ring in this cover. That being said, you should still be very cautious about it. Um, let me get the alignment just right. So the 12 is at the 12 and the six is at the six. more pressure. That's set on the floor. I don't trust my folding table. There we go. You guys probably heard that pop. That goes on. And then when you put this back on, I was instructed that you can't just spin. It will not catch you. You got to kind of just give it a little push down and then it'll start to thread just to pop it onto that first O-ring on the uh, tightening spindle. Don't need to go getting some type of pneumatic drill or hydraulic drill to get that on, just finger tight. It does have multiple O-rings as well. Mine happens to line up pretty much with the 12 and six. So that's that. This does have the typical and generic slots or holes for the leash and the holder, uh, the toe leash rather. Uh, we don't like to use them because it is just, I mean, these are actually kind of beefy and, and there's some substance to them, but we like to actually scoop them under the handles um, and the ring on the nose, it just holds a heck of a lot better in our opinion. So that goes there and the scooter's ready to go. That simple. We turn it back on, automatically comes up to speed setting four, press the trigger, goes. Wanna go full speed, double tap, you can hear it wind up. Double tap again, you can hear it wind down. The prop is all plastic. There is no threads, no nuts, no screws, simply magnetic. No gears, no teeth, no nothing. It's all driven by magnets. So literally just find the center hole, 
pops right on. Nothing to tighten after that. Pretty simple to use, pretty simple to take on and off. You saw how fast I did that. It does have um, several stabilizers, uh, five of them, and it also has, um, the stabilizers have the torque reducing um, angles on them, or to torque reducing fins, but they're not separate fins, they're just part of the stabilizers. So, I drove this yesterday, as I said. Uh, it, it was unbelievably nimble. Um, I, I had driven other scooters before. Um, they take a little getting used to each and every model. Uh, once I went to the Seacraft um, Future, it handled really well compared to the bigger, heavier scooters on the market, just because of its smaller cone and lightweight size, just a little more aerodynamic, I'm sorry, hydrodynamic, um, and handled significantly better than other scooters that I had driven previously. So that difference from others previous to the improvement that I saw on the future, um, let's just call that we went from a four to a six. That little bit of an, uh, or however you want to call it, a little bit or however much, the difference between this Seacraft Go and the Seacraft Future as far as performance and handling is at least that much even more better. Even more better? <laughs> it's, it's that much better um, in relation. So if it went from a four to a six on the future, from the future to the Go, it's going from a six to an eight. Um, one thing that I did suggest to them, um, because the, uh, the rep Jim was here when he dropped this off, um, and he was also still at Cave Adventurers when I was done driving it. And I saw all this battery um, um, ease of breakdown and um, compartmentalizing cells. Um, I suggested to them, hey, if you had this scooter, smaller shroud, easy to, easily removable cone, and the future has an easily removable cone also, but the batteries are not as um, user friendly. These are super user friendly for replacement and, and travel. If they could just make these batteries longer and then build a future length cone that will fit on this device. So maybe they'll call it the Future Go Plus or Future, I'm sorry, the um, Seacraft Go Plus or a Seacraft uh, Go Faster or Seacraft Go Longer or something to that effect. But just adding longer batteries and a longer cone on this exact um, cost effective model. Again, doesn't have all the bells and whistles of the full LCD or LED screen with battery percentages and numbers and all that. This is a much more scaled down economic version of, uh, of the, the control assembly, but it works. It works just fine. And if we're going from nine or 10 or 11 or 12,000 down to, this is from, from all the numbers I've heard, it's gonna easily be under five grand. So from what I'm hearing, somewhere around 41, 42, I'll say four to 45-ish. Um, but to basically cut the price of a scooter in half for a lesser screen that still does the job and a shorter runtime, but somewhere down the road, wink, 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 Seacraft, there might be longer batteries. That would be just an absolute home run in, in the world of diver propulsion vehicles. The versatility, the expansion, the growth, um, it, it's just, it's fantastic. This particular unit has the tie-in leashes, um, the holes for it at the three and the nine, which is how we prefer, and also the 12 and six, how some other people prefer. So it, it's got everything that you need to buy a cost-effective, dare I say, entry-level scooter. Um, there are other, some, some other entry-level or, or uh, significantly cheaper significantly less expensive, pardon me, I don't want to call them cheap, um, significantly less expensive scooters um, that are on the market that use tool batteries. Okay, they work, they're great. I would not use them as a um, full-blown tech um, DPV or scooter. This particular unit with the, 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 the design innovation and the versatility and the quality, the durability, um, again, durability of this particular unit still remains to be seen, but it's a Seacraft product and the Seacraft products have been exceptionally durable uh, and long lasting. So I'm gonna assume that these should be just about the same. So um, 
th this is just, it's a home run. I would be okay with using this as not only just a primary, but a sole scooter. Like I would go into a cave back to 3,000 or even 3,500 feet um, with this scooter. It's touting a, a, about a three and a half hour run time. That's what it's rated for. Um, I'm assuming that's if you're on the trigger full speed all the time. So not on the trigger all the time. I could see people doing four hour dives with this, not exceeding a certain penetration limit. Your number is, is between you and yourself. That's fine. I'd be okay with this up to 3,000, maybe 3,500 feet, obviously considering I had the proper amount of gas to go in that far and penetrate that far. Um, it, it's a home run, in my opinion. This, this is an absolute fantastic product, super lightweight, super versatile, um, super convenient, super user-friendly. Uh, I, I can't say enough super things about it and, and how I feel about it. It's just, it's, it's wonderful. Um, I think this is gonna be um, leading um, divers, I don't even wanna specify tech or rec, this is gonna be leading divers into the next generation of, of propulsion vehicles. Um, the, the big 100 pound devices, I think they're gonna become a thing of the past in the next few years. Um, you know, if, if you're a cave explorer and you need that 74 foot long cone with 73 hours of burn time, totally fine. That's between you and your scoot and what you're doing. For most people, this is gonna be great for a primary. And if you're going that far into the overhead, wink, wink, um, then you might wanna use this as a backup and have a, uh, another scooter as a primary. I will definitely be getting one of these as soon as they come out. They're slated, supposedly as of right now, slated to be coming out available to the public market in February of 2023. Um, there are um, not many out yet, we have one at Cave Adventurers. We got as a, as a demo unit and for people to try out, come check it out, come place a pre-order. I think these are gonna be very, very, very difficult to get when they first come out. Um, I believe that we're slating five or 10 that we're gonna order uh, on, on our first batch. And I'm pretty sure there's already four or five of them sold from people who are exceptionally interested and looking to leave a deposit. Um, but they're, they're gonna sell like hotcakes just my opinion. Could be wrong, but that's my opinion. Anyway, um, I think I covered just about everything. Um, charge port switch, simple rotational switch on and off. Um, it, it, it's like I said before, it's a home run. The, the ease of use, the versatility, the distance, the burn time, the speed, they're, they're, they're just all together in this little itty bitty tiny package. I don't think you can go wrong, especially at the price point. It was nice seeing you guys. Hope to see you again. Don't forget to dive as if.